Psilocybin is a well-known pharmacologic entity that binds to the 5-HT2A receptor, and it has been hypothesized based on convergent evidence from both preclinical and clinical models that agonism at the 5-HT2A receptor results in the so-called psychedelic experience that people uh, report when they take agents that are like psilocybin. Worth noting that psilocybin is a prodrug that is converted to its active moiety psilocin, which is the agent that actually binds to the 5-HT2A receptor. At this time, there is no medical condition that is sufficiently studied where the safety and efficacy of psilocybin has been uh, really put to the task and shown unequivocally to be uh, really able to help any specific medical problem. That being said, there are areas that are under active research. For example, in the United States, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has labeled psilocybin to be a breakthrough status uh, as a possible agent in uh, helping adults who have treatment-resistant depression. Other areas that are promising would be areas of, for example, substance use disorders, alcohol use disorders, possibly post-traumatic stress disorders. Those are all very common, very severe and devastating conditions. There are others, but those are the, the groups that are uh, being most studied at this time. Again, with the caveat that uh, uh, psilocybin remains a promising treatment, but not prime time. The major challenges of bringing psilocybin or psychedelics broadly to the market is to demonstrate efficacy in the area. That is, the ability to, in fact, show that they work. This is a little uh, more difficult than it seems uh, in the sense that in psychiatry broadly, there has been a, a great deal of difficulty in demonstrating the uh, efficacy and the safety of treatments that we know to be very effective. Um, and there's a variety of reasons why that's the case. Uh, secondly, is it's going to be incumbent that these treatments be developed by organizations who have the expertise and the track record doing it themselves. And the FDA in the United States has been very much uh, articulating a very similar viewpoint. And then finally, I think that there needs to be a, an environment, a regulatory environment that's in support of these treatments. Uh, some of the uh, psychedelics like ketamine have already been uh, approved in some countries around the world, but there are stricter uh, regulations as it relates to some other so-called psychedelics like psilocybin and so on, and there will need to be a regulatory and legal environment that is uh, really fosters and allows these treatments to be A, approved, but also to be implemented at point of care. I have, uh, for the last couple of years, I have been working with ketamine. Ketamine is the, uh, it's not referred uh, as a psychedelic in all circles, but it's sometimes encompassed in the world of psychedelics insofar as that some people do have similar psychedelic experiences as those taking more classical psychedelics like DMT or ayahuasca or ibogaine or psilocybin. And we've been looking at the safety first as well as the effectiveness of ketamine uh, at the Canadian Rapid Treatment Center of Excellence, part of Champignon, and to be able to show that it works. It works better than most of the conventional older treatments that we've had. That is, it works uh, in, a, in a greater degree of patients, it works faster, and also can treat suicidal thinking in our patients. That taken together has been an enormous offering, and we've been publishing this in peer-reviewed uh, journals in, in medicine. Um, we are in the early stages in our company now of synthesizing and developing our own ketamine derivatives, as well as looking at possible psilocybin derivatives, derivatives that we would be able to test in our own patient population and provide uh, really improvements over the existing pharmacologic agents that are out there. So it's been a very busy time for us. The next steps are, is that we need uh, derivatives of ketamine that are safer than the current treatments and treatments, uh, uh, ketamine derivatives that are also able to work longer. Ketamine works extremely well, but has a very short duration of action. Only about one to two weeks, patients' depressive symptoms start to come back. So we need uh, derivatives that can work longer and are safer. People have fewer side effects. 
With psilocybin, really it's very wide open. There is no uh, psilocybin molecule that's been shown to be efficacious in depression today. It's still uh, a nascent, very early area. And that being said is, is that we're also interested in whether we can develop a psilocybin type moiety, a molecule that is able to provide the symptom relief, but without some of the side effects that many of these treatments seem to have. So there's lots of room for growth and really evolution in this area.